everyone and welcome back to another swatching video. As you may have guessed by now, I am doing another set out of my Schmincke Hordam's Super Granulating Watercolors. I have to say I was a little disappointed with my last video filming the Volcano set. I was really hoping for some like intense, vibrant, explosive colors and that just wasn't the case but man the set that i am doing today did it ever make up for it so i'm pulling out my swatch book again and this time we're going to look at the second set on the dot chart which is the galaxy colors and i've also done an in-depth review of the limited edition haze set I will leave a link to the playlist up in the corner as well as in the description. I got the dot chart from Jackson's Art Supplies. I will leave an affiliate link in the description if you would like to go check them out and take a look for this dot card or any of the other paints that we look at today. Okay, looking at the first color here in the set, Galaxy Pink. It's a double pigment color, and it's actually, it's not what I would necessarily call a pink. It's more of a, a maroon, but I suppose Galaxy Maroon just doesn't have the same ring, but it is a very lovely color. It was relatively easy to re-wet off of the dot chart, which I really appreciated. I was able to get a good amount of pigment to lay down on my little swatch chart. Uh, speaking of swatch chart, these first three here, as well as the Volcano Brown, I messed up when I was making my rectangles and I put my little black opacity test swatch in the wrong box. <laughs> and so these like four swatches on this row on this page are gonna bug me for like the rest of my life. But what do you do? So playing around with the random mixes of water and pigment uh, to try to really accentuate the granulation and see what kind of results we're gonna get with the um, color separations once it's dried. So these colors on the dot chart were considerably easier to re-wet than the volcano colors were. So I was able to actually do little dispersion tests for the colors. This first one, um, it's probably the weakest of my dispersion tests. I think it was the smallest dot, uh, but you can sort of see the dispersion and it didn't go out too much. And it's really difficult to tell uh, which of the colors went further? I think they kind of were pretty equal. Overall, I think I enjoyed this color. There did end up being some color separation. You can definitely see some of the brown there in between some of those violet colors, which is really cool. It is heavily granulating, which of course you're gonna want in a super granulating color. It's a really nice color though. I right off the top of my head can't think of how I would apply it into the type of artwork I'm doing right now but I did enjoy it. Okay moving on to Galaxy Violet. Another two pigment color. It is really difficult for me to pick a favorite out of this set but this might just be it or maybe one of the top two, or well, maybe top three. <laughs> like I said, it's very difficult for me to pick a favorite, uh, but this color is very lovely. It's a nice cool violet. Um, it is the most transparent out of the set, which actually surprised me a little considering of the PR233, which we'll get into later in the video. I initially felt like maybe this color was a little bit uh, weak on the weak side, 
but I was able to go back and do another pigment load on my brush and pick up more pigment to make a nice and deeper color. So I think if this color was purchased in a pan versus a tube, giving it a, just a couple extra minutes uh, to reactivate with a couple of drops of water on it might be a good idea. And you can already start to see some of the color separation in this before it even finishes drying, which is kind of cool. It's a little bit difficult to see in this dispersion test. It's a little pale um, as with the pink, but I think that the blue pigment has a further dispersion than the red pigment. Good granulation, of course. You can see some of the color separation there between the two pigments. Overall, a very fun color. You can see bits of pink and you can see bits of blue and you can see bits of purple where they've mixed together. Very enjoyable. It would be very unpredictable, but fun to use. Okay, moving right along to Galaxy Blue, another dual pigment color. Um, I guess I could just mention now all the colors in this set are dual pigments. But this one is the most opaque out of the set, which is not surprising due to the PG50, which we'll take a look at a bit later. It's a very beautiful, bright, very intense blue. It actually kind of reminds me a little bit of Daniel Smith's Manganese Blue Hue, uh, which is a PB15, so it's actually a phthalo color. So this almost has that same intenseness, but not quite because of course it's not a phthalo color. Starts to granulate very quickly. I don't suspect we'll see a lot of color separation as the two hues that this is made out of the PG50 and the PB29 are relatively close uh, in hue family. Looking at the dispersion test, it looks like the blue pigment, which is a French ultramarine, has settled in a little quicker and you could see on the edges of the watery mix there, it looks like some of the more aqua-y greenish pigment has made it out a little bit further. You get a better look here at the opacity. It is a little bit more opaque um, and it is lovely and granular. Um, and you can, if you look really close, see some color separation between the warmer, sort of almost purpley looking ultramarine, and then of course you see some of the more aqua-y, brighter um, color of the PG50. Super fun color. They all are. <laughs> And moving right along to Galaxy Brown. This one seemed to re-wet, it was really nice and sort of creamy uh, re-wetting it, which was lovely. This one seems like it's going to be very opaque when it's wet, but I noticed once it dried, it, se it seemed a little more transparent. I also noticed once I got to this part here where I was doing this little place watch um, where I can add all the extra water that my little dot had reactivated much nicer, so I was getting a much more saturated color. So I, I do end up putting another, another layer on that little top swatch there, more saturated color. So it's just a, another thing. So if you buy these in the pans and not the tubes, just give them a little extra time to reactivate with the water. And the results are so much more rewarding.
So looking at the dispersion, it seems as though the brown pigment definitely has a further dispersion rate. That's a little difficult to tell because I did have some backwash causing those blooms in the center there, but it still looks like the violet pigment has settled in deeper um, to the initial dot that I put down. And then the brown has just sort of dispersed a little more. Once dry, you can see it looks rather transparent and it's a nice brown and you can see some of the um, violet pigments there peeking through every now and then. Though this one might maybe be considered the least granulating of the set. Could have been just my sample that I had, but compared to the others, the granulation was way more intense than the others. Um, I mean, it still granulates, it just doesn't seem to be as intense as it does with the other colors. And last but not least, we have Galaxy Black. Um, this also turned out to be one of my favorite of this set. Uh, it, like I said, it's really difficult to pick a favorite in this set. They're all so, so lovely. This one was also very transparent, um, much like the violet. This was very transparent. Actually, this one might be a little bit more transparent than the violet now that I, I'm looking at them after the fact. It's very dark blue, as you would expect, considering it's got a black and a blue pigment in it. Almost Payne's grayish. We'll get into that more later when we look at the pigments in them. And this is one that I again went back and put another coat on once I realized that letting it sit just a little longer um, and allowing the paint to reactivate uh, really, uh, really pays off. But also just a really nice paint to play with. Looking at the dispersion, you can see actually some difference between the black pigment and the blue pigment. I believe the black has uh, dispersed further out. The blue has settled in closer to the original. Again, I did end up with some um, backwash there, a little bit too much water. So yeah, once it's dried, it, you can see it's like pretty completely transparent. Um, it's very granular. It's very lovely. I, I really love this color. Um, you can see a little bit of a separation between the blue and the black, but they're both very dark, so it's difficult to see. You gotta get up close to see them. From a distance, it just looks like a really nice, muted, dark, bluish color. Like, I, I would say it's more of a dark blue than a black, but it's so lovely. Okay. Looking at the pigments in these colors, uh, Galaxy Pink has PB16 and PBR33. So PB16 is pigment, pigment violet 16, and looks like it's manganese violet. And I would have to say, yep, that's probably true. It's very granular and warm violet color. Um, I always assumed violets were kind of more of a cool color, but I am no expert. Now PBR 33, so that's pigment, pigment brown 33. Um, mahogany brown. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's for sure. So again, it's, uh, it's very granular. It's actually a very nice brown. I've never actually tried this brown. Okay, Galaxy Violet. I already know these two pigments, PR233 and PB29. So this is Potter's Pink and French Ultramarine. And so there's good old Potter's Pink. 
So this one here would definitely be one that would be easy to um, sort of mix on your own because uh, Potter's Pink and French Ultramarine, which is right there, are very common colors to have in a palette. Uh, honestly, I, d I don't actually have Potter's Pink myself, but I do watch a lot of other watercolor artists that do have it. They like it a lot for um, skin tones and sandy beaches and just things like that. Okay, Galaxy Blue, very pretty. Um, so it's got PB29, which is French Ultramarine, and PG60, which I think is actually Cobalt Turquoise. Let's take a look. Yep, there it is. So Cobalt Turquoise, PG50. Um, this is a really nice color. There's the French Ultramarine, which we've already looked at. Very common color. Very good to have in your palette. Okay, Galaxy Brown, PV62. Well, that color was um, in the Volcano Violet, the PV62. And PBR6. So PV62 is Cobalt Violet Hue, which is not a true cobalt. Any color that has hue written in the title, it's just a synthetic version of whatever they're trying to make it look like. But yeah, it's a very lovely neutral violet granulating. And, and PBR6, Pigment Brown 6, is Mars Brown. Sorry, that's really crinkly. It's Mars Brown. It's a nice sort of orangey brown. So the orange and the purple together would neutralize each other. So I guess that's why this, well, yeah, it does make the brown look a little bit more cool. And you can see a little bit of the color separation. You can see little bits of that violet poking through in the, uh, in the brown there, and it helps to cool off that brown, making a nice cool granular brown. I like it. Uh, Galaxy Black, I like this color too. It kind of reminds me of like a Payne's Gray. Um, in fact, I think there are some companies who have used these pigments to make Payne's Gray, but it's very granular, obviously. Super granulating, would make sense. But uh, Pigment Black 11 is actually Mars Black and of course, French Ultramarine again. That totally makes sense. Uh, Mars Black, you know, being very common uh, granulating black very popular, I think, with uh, quite a few artists if they have black in their palette. And then, of course, we already know uh, the French Ultramarine, which is uh, very common. And in most palettes, uh, even when you buy a starter set, they'll have that, that Ultramarine Blue. And so we've got three colors in this set that have that Ultramarine Blue. So there we have it. The Galaxy set of Super Granulating Colors by Schmincke. I really enjoyed this set. I had so much fun with these colors. I would totally buy these if I were looking to buy some convenience colors. Uh, hopefully I've shown that many of these you could mix on your own. Uh, if you have the individual pigments, just play around with ratios until you get the right color that you would like. I can't wait to swatch out the other sets. I mean, if I liked this one this much, and this is only the second out of eight sets that I'm gonna look at, I'm in trouble. <laughs>